Well, we're in the gym. It's fight week. Big D, David Adelaide. How are we, my friend? All good. Can't complain. Healthy. Um, and that's the main thing. You got me here late. Why are we training so late? Why you, why you got me missing the last train home? That, that's what could be happening. You know that. Getting used to fighting at um, night time. You know, um, a lot of us train early and whatnot during camp. But um, when it comes to the time you need it the most, which is fight day, you fight at night. So we train at night, get used to fighting at night time and get the body used for war. I thought this was some, like some jet lag thing because you've only just come back, haven't you, from the States. But are, are you like, how long does it take you to adjust? To be fair, it depends. But um, with me, once I get in the zone, I'm in the zone. Um, there is a bit of jet lag, but it's all right. It's all good. You do this now, don't you? Puerto Rico, Miami. Well, what's the uh, what's the Miami heat adding to, to Big D? I'm running out of pages of my passport. It's all right. But, uh, <laughs> no, it's good. It's good. It's just because that's where my trainers are and whatnot. Um, get the experience. There's a lot of heavyweights um, overseas, you know, across the pond. So I'm just getting some good experience and getting getting used to what it's like fighting the international boys. Do you know what I was thinking about this, right? Because you see a lot of boxers go overseas to places like America. Like Hamza Shiraz has done that. He's getting great sparring over there. But in the UK, all the best heavyweights are kind of over here. So what's it like going over there? I mean, over here, you've been sparring Tyson Fury, Anthony Joshua. How does it compare over there? It's just different, I think, in terms of mindsets. You know, um, a lot of the people at the top of the tree think different. You know, and um, it's the intricate details when you're in the ring. And... Um, you know, that's what matters. I think when you're sparring a lot of the international boys as well, they have a different sort of teaching. All the English teachers have a, have the same sort of teaching, so it's good to kind of get used to a different sort of teaching and um, getting used to fighters that fight different to what you're used to. So it's Friday night, you're back again. You must have some good memories of your call now. You, you tend to put people to sleep there. Yeah, I do. <laughs> and um, Friday night, I'm adding to that. The last one, it was uh, Dimitro Bezos. It was the left hook from hell. Best punch of your career, what do you reckon? I suppose. You know, I do a lot of things in sparring, you know, and I bang people out in sparring and whatnot. But um, like I say, it's, it's another thing doing it on fight night. You know, a lot of people are gym fighters and when it comes to fight night, they get like stage fright and whatnot. So doing it in the ring is one thing when nobody's there, but it's about doing it on the big stage. So um, in terms of the big stage, yeah, that was my best shot, but... I've got many more to come. I've got a lot of my arsenal. That's interesting what you said there, because I, I remember when you've had performances that you weren't so happy with yeah. and you'd do interviews where you're saying, I'm not like this in the gym, man. In the gym, man, it's different. Yeah. So you're taking that form now into the ring. Yeah, I'm starting to find my feet, because you know, you know what they say, the, the juniors is different to the seniors, the seniors is different to the pros. Uh, you find your feet in the juniors after a few fights, you find your feet in the seniors after a few fights. I've had a few fights as a pro now, so I'm starting to find my feet, get used to the ring. Um, seeing what it's like with the cameras there, you know, um, commentary, you know, um, the fans cheering, you giving the ring announcement. Uh, it's good, it's good. So I just get used to it. Same thing I want to do on Friday, get used to it. And um, it's going to be a lot of nights. Emir Amatovic, he's the man you're facing on Friday night. What do you know about him? Good fighter. WSB, uh, he boxed, you know, internationally as an amateur. Um, he's got some decent power. He seems to have a bit of bottle. Um, he comes to win. And I think that's what I need, someone that's going to really come and bring it because they're going to make a lot of mistakes. And um, if he thinks he's courageous, we'll see how courageous he is. Um, I've got a message from him because uh, I, uh, I tend to, to DM future opponents and he doesn't say anything about what he's got between his legs. What he does say is, hey Dev, he should know I am really ready for war. I'm coming to win and take the belt with me. What's your reaction to these comments? I mean, I'm going to punch him in his mouth on Friday anyways. So he's going to see me on Thursday at the weigh-in. He can say what he wants to say. And on Friday, he gets to put his hands on me. So... We'll see. I mean, I'm going to put my hands on him on Friday. Uh, that belt's not going nowhere. I ain't even showed it off properly yet, so it definitely can't go nowhere. First title, how does it feel? Good, good. My living room looks a bit different now. Mm. You know, I'm starting to get some shelves. I'm ready for all of these belts, so uh, yeah, it's real good. First of many? First of many, man. First of many. And um, my mum wants some belts, so I've got to go bring some back for her. OK, well, that's Friday night on BT Sport, defending your WBO European heavyweight title. Let's talk a little bit about what's going on the on the British scene. Now, so much is going on right now. Fabio Wardley was ordered to defend his British title against Fraser Clark. Fraser Clark was pulled out of purse bids. 
What did you make of the whole situation, David Adelaide? Funny. Um, they all had a lot to say before. Um, before the fight was being made and then after it, everyone's gone silent. My phone started buzzing. I didn't answer my phone to nobody. It's not my priority. I don't really care about them. You know, um, I focus on me. You know, when I, when I turn pro, um, I did it for myself and not for them. So it's about focusing on me, um, getting through Friday and then just seeing what the, the world has to offer offer me. You know, um, I've got a lot of things going well for me and a lot of things put in my direction. So I just have fun whilst I can. We're not in this game for a long time, man. So have some fun whilst you're there. Make the most of it. Make some memories and then go about your day. That's a fairly diplomatic answer. I mean, your, your promoter, Frank Warren, said that he was a bit annoyed watching the whole thing go on because he felt like, and many felt like, you should have been ordered to fight Fabio Wardley for the British. Yeah. They went with Fraser Clark, and Fraser Clark hasn't taken the fight for whatever reason. Is there any frustration watching that situation from yourself? Yeah, of course, because I thought I'd have been ordered for it. And, um, of course, now that fight fell through, I think they're talking about I'm being ordered for it and that I'm going to be mandated. I don't know what that means. Does that mean I have to fight for it? Are they going to force me to get in the ring and fight for it? Who knows? It's going to be per space. I don't know. Everyone's talking about a load of different things, but uh, I don't feed into it. You know, um, no point in me even feeling upset about it. It's happened, right? You can't change the past, so it is what it is. It seems that Fabio's struggling to get an opponent now, so they're calling my name. It's funny. It was only the other day Eddie Hearn was saying how nobody knows me. And then someone called my phone up the other day and said, Eddie Hunt keeps doing interviews mentioning my name. Muppet. You know what I mean? So it's funny. Well, look, in theory, what should happen next is that the board orders yourself to fight Fabio Wardley, Wardley to defend his title against you. And then negotiations begin. If there's no deal reached, purse bids are ordered, which is kind of where they reached before. So are you in this, are you kind of saying you would take that fight if it was there, if it, if it was ordered? I ain't getting pulled out on no fights. Put it that way, so... What happens, happens. Like I said, I've got to get through Friday. Let me go stop Amachovic. Yeah. Amir, I'm going to call him Amir. Let me go stop him. Like I said, I need a car park full of bodies. So I'm going to park him up in the car park and then we go again. Well, the British scene... No, 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 I mean, we, you know, we've talked about Amartovic, but the British scene, it feels like there's a crop coming through, yourself being one of them. There's Solomon Dakers, oh, there's Fabio Wardley, yeah. Fraser Clark. Anyone give you a good fight out of them? None of them. I don't even care about them, realistically. Um, and you know what I mean? I mean I'd, sometimes I talk with passion, it can come across as aggression, but it's not that. But I mean it in like just the bluntest way possible. I don't really care about them, like realistically. I don't think about them. The names don't get mentioned in my everyday life. Um, if I see them, it's like, it's like I, walk, I don't even, I don't care about none of them, really, honestly. So if them facts get made and, and it makes sense, then I'll take it. I mean, I'm pretty sure you know me, I ain't going to shy away from them sort of fights. But um, yeah, everyone's got something to say, man. And, you know, if we're all going to end up fighting each other anyways, then what we say is a bit irrelevant. So no point in me getting high rate about it now. They're not here in front of me. Um, but yeah, you got to leave the internet for the internet, man, because the internet will always win. So I'll leave them to hype up on the internet. We don't care about them, but someone that does care about you. I put a tweet out the other day about you fighting. Devin Haney quote tweeted it and said, my bro, David Adler. You got a bit of a bit of a mate going on there? Yeah, yeah, Devin, Devin's my bro. I was meant to go to his fight, actually, uh, in Vegas against Lomachenko, but um, obviously I was in camp, so I couldn't go. So shout out Devin, man. Shout out, Devin Haney. Look, finally, I just want to get your thoughts on two fights that are coming up. Usyk versus Daniel Dubois. How does it go? Good fight. Usyk's got the brains and whatnot. Usyk seems to take a dig. Joshua's no pushover. And Joshua can certainly whack. So if he can hold Joshua's punches for 24 rounds, he should be able to hold Dubois. So, um, but Dubois's not the smartest fighter, so sometimes that, that goes in his favour. You know, um... He does the same thing over and over again and sometimes when people set traps he doesn't bite because he's not even smart enough to read it. So he could work in his favour. He might end up hitting hitting Usyk and getting him out of there. So who knows? Joe Joyce, Zile Zang. Joyce gets his chance at redemption to do it again. You were there around fight week. Were you surprised at how it went and also how can Joe Joyce get the win this time? No, I was surprised but at the same time the heavyweight scene, Zhang's, Zhang's a big boy. Um... We saw him the day before. He's got big hands as well. Um, 
he was a he was a seasoned amateur. I heard some stories about him in the amateurs. So I knew he could whack, but uh, Jesse just got to go in there, change his game plan, do do a lot of different things, and um, he's got to go out there and read the game a lot different. You know, um, he made a, a few rookie mistakes the last time, like standing in front of him and moving to his backhand, and you know, Zhang was throwing that backhand, and every time he threw it, it landed. You know, um, so I think he just got to do a few different things, and um, he might be able to to get Zhang out of there. You never, who knows? Or you all might go to points, but. I mean, regardless, it's going to be a fight that a lot of people are going to tune into to watch. Definitely. Well, before I grab the, the last train home, I'm going to give you this mic. I want you to look down there and give them some bars and tell them why they need to watch David Adelaide on Friday night on BT Sport. Knockouts. Judges ain't needed. There you go. I'll drop, drop the jack. <laughs>